this is Toad. And that's me. Okay, okay, this is me. My name is Corey, and I'm one of your OG admins here. Toad is the baby of my snake family. He resides in a small little two-bedroom condo in my living room that is kind of in need of an upgrade at this point. When I got Toad, he was a seven-week-old hatchling who his breeder believed was a failure to thrive. He had not taken a single meal, and his breeder reached out to me to see if I wanted to take him on and try and get him going. When I first brought him home, I went and I purchased one of the Thrive brand PVC enclosures, and that worked well for a little while. I did notice right away that Toad grew very, very slowly, and I did want to get him into a traditional PVC, but I needed something small so that I wouldn't overwhelm him with too much space. When planning his new enclosure, I wanted to incorporate other things that I had interests in, and I just happened to be a huge plant dork, so I decided I was going to build him a planted enclosure. Rather than getting into the specific reasons why I chose a planted enclosure over a bioactive enclosure, I'm just gonna go through some of the differences between the two. The most obvious difference would be the addition of your cleanup crew, like springtails and isopods. It's more of the less obvious reasons that made my decision for me. For starters, both enclosures still require regular cleaning. It's a myth that you do not have to clean these enclosures. Now with bioactive enclosures, cleaning day, a lot of us tend to take our substrates and dump them outside. We use them in garden beds or in compost piles. You can't do that with a bioactive enclosure because of biosecurity. Those isopods and springtails, they are most likely not native to your area and releasing them can lead to some pretty catastrophic consequences. On the topic of isopods, now, we all know how snake morphs work and how there's about a billion different snake morphs. Did you know that that is also true with isopods? There is zebra ones, there's purple ones, there's blue ones. That's a rabbit hole that I don't want to go down. Also, on the topic of bugs, you have good bugs like your isopods and your springtails, but you also have bad bugs that will totally decimate a plant population in your enclosure. I'm talking about thrips, spider mites, mealy bugs. Now, the difference between treating those is easy and not so easy when you're trying to maintain a population of good bugs. Another difference between the two would be how you go about changing out your substrate. Some of the isopods that we can purchase for bioactive enclosures, they can be pretty pricey. So when it comes time to change out our substrate, we might be inclined to pick all of those out. Now, I've built bioactive enclosures in the past, and honestly, that takes a lot of time. Like, it, it's no joke on how much time it takes to pick all those isopods and find them. They are incredibly hard to find sometimes. Now, I don't want it to sound like I'm trying to talk down on bioactive enclosures because they do have certain advantages over just a planted enclosure. For starters, those cleanup crew that we put in the bioactive enclosures, they can do a pretty phenomenal job at removing debris, decaying organic matter, and all of these things, they're going to be present in even just a planted enclosure. This in itself is something I would give some serious thought to because when things decay and they start to rot, they generate bacteria. And that is one thing that we really want to keep out of our enclosures altogether. Toad is now a year old and he's pretty much caught up on his growth. So it's time to upgrade his enclosure. I've decided that I'm going to film the whole process of building it and let you guys in.